our goal here is to write a function template that will take in begin and end iterators and determine whether or not that sequence contains any duplicate elements. Now for a model over here we have a version of the a version of the function that actually works on just an array of integers. So it takes in an array and a length for that array. And what we'll do, what we're doing is we're comparing every pair of elements. So we have an outer loop that will iterate over the entire array. We have an inner loop that will start its iteration at the next element over compared to where the outer loop is. And that way, again, we only compare each pair once. And also we avoid comparing an element to itself and potentially tripping up our logic. If it so happens that the two elements that the inner and the outer loop are looking at are equal according to the equals equals operator, then we do have a duplicate. So we return false. But if we get through every single pair of elements and we don't find a duplicate, then we know that there aren't any duplicates in the entire array and we return true. Now again, our task is to generalize this to work on arbitrary iterators and also arbitrary element types as long as they overload the equals equals operator. So I'll pause for a few seconds to give you a chance to pause the video and work on it on your own, and then we'll work it out together. Okay, so we're writing a function template here, and it's going to be parameterized over the iterator type. So let's go ahead and write the template header. And I'm actually going to name the type parameter just iter. Then like the standalone no duplicates version, we're going to be returning a Boolean, which is going to be true if there aren't any duplicates and false if we do find a duplicate. We're also going to call this no duplicates. And rather than taking in a pointer to the beginning of an array and the length with iterators, we take in a begin iterator and an end iterator. So we have iter begin and iter end as our two parameters. Now, once again, we do need nested loops to compare every pair of elements. The outer one, what it'll do is it'll start at begin and iterate all over, all the way up to end. The inner one, just like the one with that we saw on an array of ints, needs to start at the next element over um, after where the outer loop is. So let's write the outer loop first. We'll use the begin iterator to uh, to do our iteration. So we won't actually create a new iterator here in our for loop. Of course, when begin is equal to end, that's when we've run out of elements. So we'll continue as long as those two are not equal. And we'll use prefix plus plus to increment the iterator and move it to pointing to the next element in the sequence. So that takes care of our outer loop. Now for our inner loop, we do need a separate iterator variable because it's going to be moving independently of the outer loop. And we want it to start off at the next element over from begin. Now with our iterators, we don't actually have the ability to add one to an iterator. So what we'll have to do is we'll have to first copy it. I'll call this one inner. So we'll copy it over from begin. And then in the next statement, we'll go ahead and increment inner. So it's pointing at the next element in the sequence. Now we can do our inner iteration. Once again, in our for loop, we're not going to be declaring anything. We'll stop when inner gets to end. And we'll increment inner to move it pointing to the next element after each iteration of the inner loop. Okay, now we can go ahead and compare and see if begin and inner are pointing at elements with the same value. So we'll dereference both of them using the prefix star operator. And once again, we're, we're assuming that the element type actually overloads the equals equals operator. And we'll compare that to star end. And if those two elements are equal, then we do have a duplicate. So we're going to return false immediately. Otherwise, we're going to continue onward in our iterations. And if we get through comparing every single pair of elements and we haven't found a duplicate, then we know there aren't any. So we can return true at the very end.